The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen, and the NBC Orchestra inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Tina Turner, comedian Bill Maher, magician Jonathan Neil Brown, Joe Dioria, also known as Dr. Flamo, and the mighty Carson art players. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny. What a happy crowd. Nice crowd. I think you're a little too happy. <laughs> I don't know what you're so happy about. Where were you when 1982 hit the fan? <laughs> I tell you, if the monologue dies tonight, we are dressed for it. <laughs> All rental jobs? <laughs> nice. How many of you from Michigan? Out for the Rose Bowl game. How many of you from Denver and don't give a damn? <laughs> anyway, do you believe this is the last show of, yeah. of 1982? My God, doesn't seem possible. Now, by the way, I have an announcement to make. If, if you're drinking tonight, do not drive. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I am very serious about that. And, <laughs> And if you have to drink, at least wear a reflective flea collar so we can see you, <laughs> see where you're at. Do you know what Forest Lawn does every year, which is a very good idea? Yeah. Forest Lawn, the world famous mortuary, which is right across the street from NBC, uh, serves coffee all night long. And they suggest if you've been out before you, if you want to rest for a while, I mean, not. <laughs> a long while. A long while. <laughs> It's a good place to go to kind of sober up before you drive home, and they have free coffee over there. It's a little weird. You ever see a cup with six handles? <laughs> uh, they'll rent you a box, too, if you want to sleep it off. I mean, they do nice things. Do you know this Tonight Show is going to span two years, if you think about it? Yeah. There have been some shows that really have seemed like they've been two years. <laughs> Remember the night with the flea expert? Oh, yes. That show was two years <laughs> right there. Anyway, out here in Los Angeles, this is a strange place during the holidays. Only in Los Angeles would you see a sign on the bar that said, New Year's Eve, $50 a couple, no women allowed. <laughs> strange. Let's pause and reflect about all the good things that happened in 1982. Okay, moving along. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, uh, already, already for me, 1983 is off to a bad start. <laughs> I personally financed a new comedy album called Meryl Streep, A Wild and Crazy Broad. <laughs> Should have known. Well, maybe 83 will be the year that things start trickling down. Now, are you going to behave yourself yes, sir. tonight? I always do on New Year's Eve. Well, I've been with you. Well. New Year's Eve. I remember one year Ed called Paul Maison and said, I don't care if it's before it's time, I'm thirsty. <laughs> now, remember that? <laughs> I asked Ed recently, I said, what's that little red mark on the bridge of your nose? And he said, my glasses. And I said, why don't you just drink through a straw? <laughs> Right, that was a baddie. Uh, now, our director, Bobby Quinn, does get a little carried away on New Year's Eve. Last year, they found him about four in the morning in the Hollywood Wax Museum, <laughs> lying next to a statue of Ma Kettle smoking a cigarette. <laughs> That's, now, that is really weird. Yeah. 
If you have, have you all made your New Year's Eve plans? If you haven't, you're here in Burbank. I recommend highly a little Italian restaurant that I go to frequently. Uh, Vinny Abruzzi's Little Touch of Newark. It is. <laughs> it's a rough place, but they do have a New Year's Eve special. The first two shots are on the house. After that, you buy your own bullets. <laughs> Tonight they're serving over at Vinny's uh, Chicken Luciano. Uh, <laughs> it's prepared a little differently. What they do, they, they shave a live chicken's feathers and then put it in a tiny electric chair. <laughs> well, I told you it's weird. Okay. I'm gonna stick my neck out and make some predictions for 1983. Everybody does it, right? I predict Liz Taylor will have a new last name. Villachez. Uh, Koo Stark. Remember her? Yes. Koo Stark will marry basketball great Bob Cousy and become Koo Cousy. <laughs> Dustin Hoffman will have a nervous breakdown trying to locate his G-spot. Those are just some of the predictions I'm making. We got a, a, a vaudeville show for you tonight. We got a lot of performance tonight, a lot of great people on the show. Uh, later on, Burt Reynolds will be out here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't do that. No, he'll be out here and deny that he gave E.T. his credit card so he could call home. That is not <laughs> We've got the dynamic Tina Turner with us tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Break it up. Yeah. Comedian Bill Maher, a very funny uh, young man. We have a magician for you, Jonathan Neal Brown. Wow. Ooh, wow. We, have, we have a fellow by the name of Joe DeOria, but better known as El Flamo, will be here oh, to something? perform. What? Wait a minute. Doctor. Doctor Flamo. Doctor Flamo. Yes. I'm sorry. Did yes, I demote him to El Flamo? <laughs> Dr. Flamo, I'm sorry. <laughs> By God, I took away his title. It's Dr. Flamo. And the Mighty Carson Art Players. Yeah. So, so. so stay where you are. Tonight, we welcome the Sharp Electronic Company Corporation. From sharp minds come sharp products. And we'll be back. Well, we are back. Yes. And it's about 20 of 12. You didn't mention, you didn't mention that we're going to Times Square. I should have mentioned during the monologue I did to the studio audience, we're going to cut away a couple of times to Times Square and then actually be there at midnight to watch the famous yeah. ball drop from the, I guess it's the Allied... The Allied Chemical Building, uh -huh. yes. Now, That's for years, exciting, you know. I think uh, whether you're at home or at a party, I think one of the traditions, along with Guy Lombardo, who is no longer with us, unfortunately, was watching the Times Square festivities. Right. I don't know how many thousands or millions of people would gather there. Ben Grower did it for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, our NBC cameras in New York, our station, because we're right at 30 Rock, and they right. simply have to go over and, I guess, set up where? Where would they be shooting from? Probably from the top of the Allied uh, Chemical Building. Chemical Building. Yeah. And we're going to cut back there uh, to NBC. Ben Grower used to do it. We have a gentleman back there by the name of uh, NBC correspondent by the name of Bruce Adams. I do not know Bruce, but let us cut now to Times Square and talk to Bruce Adams. from the Allied Chemical Building. We're uh, looking down at the crowd now at Times Square. And there uh, seems to be uh, probably fewer spectators this year, Johnny, than there has been in years past, but we still have about uh, 19 minutes before midnight and uh, does you're in the new year. Uh, Bruce, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Do you... Uh, uh, do you think the crowds will pick up uh, a little more than that? Uh, yeah, Johnny, they probably will. Uh, it's right, it's chilly back here, and the wind is uh, coming in at about eight knots an hour, but uh, we'll keep in touch, and uh, now back to you, Johnny. Thank you, Bruce. We'll cut back to uh, Bruce Adams from time to time. Yeah. And see how things are going there. I mean, I... It really is the center of the celebration. It's right New there. Years it's without wonderful. a remote is just crazy. Yeah. And I must tell you something. I don't, I don't mean to startle you. Yes. We have a big show. I'll just take a minute. Yeah. 
I want to tell you something. We're celebrating tonight our 25th New Year's Eve working together. Are you kidding? Oh. Mm -hmm. How about that? That's fantastic. 25 years. Okay. Our Silver Jubilee. That's wonderful. And it's been a nice 25 years. Yes, uh, sir. My next guest is called the hardest working woman in rock and roll. She is sensational. She will be appearing at Caesars in uh, Atlantic City on January the 14th, 15th, and 16th. Then in New York City at the Ritz on January 27th, 28th, and 29th. Would you welcome, please, fiery is a good word for her, yes. right? Tina Turner. <laughs>
time. Uh, if you do this, we'll be fine. If I do this, we'll be fine. Yes. We'll do that and then cut we'll back to, uh, cut back, what's his name? Uh, Bruce Adams, Bruce Adams. <laughs> in Times Square. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Wow, that's yeah, awesome. the pillow. Getting close. Well, it's yeah. about... You know, that's a new uh, new name to me, because I know all the announcers in New York, all the He's old He's fairly guys. new, yeah. yeah what's it's his about name again? Bruce, Bruce Adams. Bruce uh, Adams. Uh, let's You've cut back to, me, yeah. to our correspondent uh, in Times Square to see how things are going. Uh, Bruce, come on in. Uh, thank you, Johnny. I can hardly hear you. As you can see, the crowds are they're really pouring it now. We're estimating there are probably several hundred thousand people here. <laughs> and you can feel the excitement as it. Just about, uh, I guess, six minutes, 20 seconds to go. Uh, Bruce, this is Johnny again. Can you, can you speak up a little bit? I, I can't hear you. I can't hear you over the sound of the crowd. Can, can you hear me better now, Bruce? Uh, yes, yes, I can. You know, Ben Grower covered this uh, thing for about uh, about 25 or 30 years. Uh, how long have you been covering it? Uh, they just hired me this afternoon, Johnny, but I... You can feel the electricity now. Back to you, Johnny. Thank you, Bruce. We'll keep in touch with you. Bruce Adams in New York. Thank you. Uh, Oh, for his first assignment, he's doing a wonderful doing job. A, we'll do this. We'll be right back. And then, tough, those yes, sir. <laughs> it is just about... 30 seconds. 25 seconds. Let us cut back uh, to our NBC correspondent, Bruce Adams at Times Square. Bruce, can you hear me? Bruce, can you hear me there? Johnny, some more, more people are just arriving here at Times Square. Must be probably a quarter of a minute. The giant ball is about to drop now. Ten seconds. We can see the giant ball. There it goes. Seven, six, four, three, two, one. There it is. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. What a wish you. Happy New Year.
And let's hope that 1983 is a healthful, happy, and most of all, a sane new year Safe in this year, world yes. of ours. Indeed. Uh, my, uh, my next guest is, is setting up. I uh, gave him a wrong introduction in the monologue. Was well, not your fault. On the sign no. over there, it said... It, it did say El Flamo. El he Flamo. appears frequently in downtown Los Angeles at the Society... I think because of his university work. ...for the preservation of variety art. His name actually is Joy, uh, Joy D'Oria. Uh, he is better known for his stage name, Dr. Flamo. And Dr. Flamo is now ready. Dr. Flamo. If, uh, if I could just have a little silence, please, to be sure the candles are in tune. Ah. 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 Close enough. I would now like to do one of your favorites, and I hope one of mine. Smoke gets in your eyes. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I'm so glad I didn't see the rehearsal. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. I didn't know what he was going to do. Thank you, good doctor. Oh, you're cooking tonight. I know during the New Year's week, the TV networks traditionally inundate us with year-end news wrap-ups that feature the people, the stories, the events that shaped that year. We wondered what one of these year-end wrap-ups would look like 20 years from now, say in the year uh, 2002. December 31st, 2002. It's the evening news year in review with Zontar Rather. Good evening, from the polluted oceans to the radioactive mountains to all the United States. Let's take a look at the big stories that shaped the year 2002. It was June of this year that former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, in order to enhance his forgotten place in the international community, made a dramatic entrance at the United Nations sporting his new Gandhi look. <laughs> As a sign that the population of the United States is continuing to age, this summer, Hugh Hefner unveiled the first adult magazine for male senior citizens. Gray boy. <laughs> this was the year that saw a major breakthrough in the medical field. Now that artificial, artificial hearts are commonplace, scientists developed an economical... <laughs> scientists developed an economical method for servicing them with the invention of the inflatable cardiologist. <laughs> 2002 was the year that saw England's queen, Coo Stark, shock her royal subjects by starting her own tradition, changing with the guards. <laughs> and tonight, in our nostalgia file, for those of you old enough to remember motion picture personality E.T., he's back in the news and has been signed to replace retired Hall of Fame baseball star Jim Palmer as the model for all jockey underwear ads. <laughs> After 30 years of strong support for the women's movement, 65-year-old actor Alan Alda stunned the medical world when he recently developed breasts. <laughs> nice set, Hawkeye. 
This just in, the show-me state of Missouri voted overwhelmingly to go totally nude and also to change its motto to the I'm gonna show you state. <laughs> Aging rock star Mick Jagger was seriously injured this year during a Bristol, England concert when his sagging lips became caught in the spokes of his wheelchair. <laughs> In this year of 2002, the job outlook uh, brightened considerably for unemployed auto workers. Their unemployment figures plummeted to 96.7%, and UAW members found new work as house pets. <laughs> Earlier this year, what do we know? It's 2002. Earlier this year, marine biologists at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography announced that the high-pitched frequencies given off by sharks that sound like this is actually a language that, when slowed down to one-fiftieth of the speed, can be understood by humans and really sounds like this. I'm gonna bite your butt. <laughs> in, in July, the Reverend Jerry Falwell won a major victory for his moral majority by railroading through Congress passage of a bill making it illegal to glance down while taking a shower. In March, fans of early morning television were shocked when it was revealed that for the past 25 years, today's show anchorwoman Jane Pauley was built and operated by the creator of the Muppets, Jim Henson. <laughs> In sports, the regular football season ended last week with the 476 consecutive feet by the L.A. Rams. <laughs> playing, playing against the San Pedro, California Brownie, Brownie Troop, 114. Afterwards, the Ram coach consoled his by players by saying, don't take it so hard, guys. Those little broads came to play. <laughs> September saw a senseless tragedy when talk show host Phil Donahue ran to the back of his audience to field a question from a trisexual anorexic mafia hitman. <laughs> Donahue became entangled in his own microphone cord and was accidentally hanged. <laughs> Phil Donahue, gone at 75. <laughs> Earlier this month, the 500th plan for the controversial MX missile was revealed by President of the United States, Liberace, the, the candelabra dense pack. In February, the last valley girl, Pia Galleria. Yes, she passed away suddenly at a retirement home in Sherman Oaks. Ironically, she suffocated after actually gagging on a spoon. <laughs> also, it was the year that commercial spokespersons Brenda Vaccaro and Kathy Rigby were sentenced to life imprisonment for selling female secrets to the Russians. <laughs> and finally, after two successful terms as president, 92-year-old Ronald Reagan returned to the silver screen to star in the blockbuster sequel, Tootsie 15. <laughs> This is Zontar Rather saying good night, good luck, and Happy New Year. Thank you, Doc. We are back. I'm glad you're all in a good mood. It's always great to have an audience like this is up, especially when you have a comedian on the show. He has been with us before. He's from New York. It appears at the improvisation and catch a rising star when he's not on the road. Would you welcome, please, Bill Maher. Bill! Turn on the mic. I travel around the country, and for some reason, a lot of people still pretend they don't know who I am. It's weird, I don't know. Thank you. Oh, a microphone, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> that makes it too easy. Yeah, TV is, uh, TV I think is funniest when um, they don't mean to be, when they don't know they're doing it. An example of this, I was watching the, uh, the funeral of Leonid Brezhnev a couple of months ago. Ruler of Russia died. I know many of you are still bummed out about it. <laughs> he, had, he had seemed so alive just days before, but... <laughs> The thing is, I'm watching the funeral, it was a big event, all the networks carried it, and one of the networks, get this, called it a special. <laughs> I guess special report is what they meant, right? I thought it was gonna be like, hey, let's bury a communist, huh? <laughs> Here's Monty Hall. Thanks, Don Pardo. What do we have behind the Iron Curtain? <laughs> Uh, 
It's a dead dictator, what do you know? <laughs> I tell you, I would hate to be a game show host in Russia. The economy is not too good. They have absolutely nothing to give away. <laughs> what does Jay have in the box? It's meat. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hard-to-get consumer item, huh? But I kid the communists, ladies and gentlemen. I kid, actually, we shouldn't kid the communists. They have a new czar now. Read about this guy, Mr. Andropov. Another tough cookie. Says if there's even a threat to their security, the United States would receive a crushing retaliatory blow. But Reagan had a very mature response. He said, double darers go first. <laughs> I don't even know what the fight is with Russia anyway. Why are they the enemy? As we enter another year, I have to ask, what's the problem? You know, why do we live under this shadow of a nuclear attack all the time? What's the issue? That they invaded Afghanistan? <laughs> yeah, me and my whole family are real ticked off about that every day. <laughs> oh, think of all the sweaters we're missing out on. <laughs> when they did that, I said, hold me back because, you know. Our countries aren't even that different. I've read about Russia. You know what communism is? It just means that the state takes 80% of a worker's wages automatically, which is awful. But in the United States, you can be taxed up to 78%. So if we kill each other, it's over that 2%. <laughs> Hence the irony, so. But enough politics, it's a festive occasion. In fact, you guys are a great crowd. You are the best crowd of 1983 so far for me, and I'm not kidding about it. <laughs> You are the best of the year so far, and I mean that, I'm not kidding you. It's especially glad to be here on this New Year's Eve because I have never in my life had a good New Year's Eve. Uh, it's just my bad luck day. Give me an example of the luck I have with it. Last year I went to a New Year's Eve party and it broke up around 11. That's bad luck. This is my first New Year's away from my home state of New Jersey, which I like to mention because... Thank you, it's nice to hear cheers. I mentioned it because it needs defense. People have made it a laughing stock around the country and that's, that's wrong, right, Jersey people? Yeah, Jersey folks, what city? Well, that's a slum, but there are many lovely cities. Many lovely cities. I, I kid because I love, and you know that, right? No, I spent my whole life in Jersey. It's wonderful, I grew up there. Uh, my parents, funny, moved from the city to the suburbs when the kids were born, they said, to make our life easier. And then during my life, my father has done nothing but bust my chops for having an easy life. <laughs> I finally said, Dad, I would've gone to Vietnam, but I had Little League. Parents never forget the tough days, the early days, you know, the depression, all that. Nothing was ever wasted in my house. My father used to, for example, walk into the kitchen and go, you know, the black banana is the best one. <laughs> and we'd go, okay, you eat it. <laughs> Here's a straw, it's a little mushy. <laughs> Yeah, they, they never lose that mentality. In fact, whenever we would complain, even as a little kid, I remember this, he would always tell us about the depression, you know, put it in perspective for us. That was his method. Uh, of course, I didn't understand at that age, he'd go, you know, in the 30s, the whole country was in a depression. And I'd think, wow, a whole country staying in bed watching TV all day. <laughs> that is kind of sad. I pictured other countries, you know, our neighbors coming by to cheer us up. You know, Canada came down, hey, I got some ice cream. <laughs> Mexico trying to shame us out of it. What are you depressed about? You're an attractive country. You're well-liked around the world. Get out of bed. We have to eat dogs down here, for God's sakes. Get out of bed. And you know that that's a word the government would never use again, depression, right? I mean, they are through with that. When they used it once, and it was depressing. I mean, they'll never use that. You know the one they like now when things are bad, right? That's it, sure. No matter how bad things get, it will always be just a recession because that sounds better. Sounds like recess. <laughs> sure. People aren't out of work, they're just playing kickball. So, Happy New Year, you've been... Hey, my 
mind, my next guest is a young magician who has made a study of Japanese magic. It was a great success when he performed in Japan. He appears frequently at the Magic Castle in Hollywood. Next week, he'll be at the Comedy Magic Club in Hermosa Beach, California. Would you welcome Jonathan Neil Brown? We have to say goodnight? Right now. That's Happy about New it, year. huh? But we will be back next week. Next year. Next year. Well, this year. <laughs> we have what? A oh, minute. We have oh, a minute. Have I thought you said we had to say goodnight. You do have to say goodnight within a minute. Within a minute. <laughs> what would I do without that That's man? Right, yes. <clears throat> anyway, it's been a nice 25 years with you. Sure I want to thank everybody friend. on the show tonight. Pleasure. And uh, let's thank our correspondent in New York. Uh, I keep forgetting his name. Bruce Adams, who Bruce did such Adams, a, yeah. a remarkable job. Yeah, he's going to go places, that guy. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. 
and to Tina, and to Dr. Flamo, and to Jonathan, and to everybody. Have a very nice year. We'll see you Happy next year. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs>